Hi, my name is Andrew Banson. Welcome to this video series on Stringer uh, Survey for Simple 3D. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you is this uh, directory here, uh, this uh, folder. It gets installed when you install uh, Stringer Survey. And this folder contains data that I'm going to be using throughout this video series. So if you wanted to um, work alongside me, uh, as I progress through the, uh, this tutorial, then uh, this is where you can access the, the, the files required. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a um, completely new file and I'm going to reference this drawing template here, Civil 3D drawing template called Stringer Survey. Now as you know with Civil 3D drawing templates are very important because they contain all the required styles you know, for our Kogo points. Um, our Kogo points we pl will be placed on specific layers and there's a description key set that describes, you know, based on the code, how the the Kogo points going to be styled up, what layer it's going to go on, that type of thing. So, so Civil 3D drawing templates are very important. This is the one I'm going to reference. Uh, we have some aerial imagery for the site. So I'm going to import that, uh, this JPEG file. Now there is a world file associated with this, which um, describes the coordinates for the, uh, or the positioning of the uh, aerial image. This SDR file is the contains the raw survey data that I'm going to import. Uh, we support a, a bunch of different raw data file formats, but um, in this uh, video series, I'm going to be using the SDR. Then I have a CSV file. I'm just going to open this up. This contains the coordinates for my control points. So the SDR file, uh, the raw survey, the control is just arbitrary. But what we're going to do is uh, based on the, the control number. So this number, the point number for the control um, will uh, correspond to a point number in the raw. Uh, so we're just going to replace it with these coordinates uh, a bit later on. And that'll shift, will transform our survey onto MGA um, coordinates. So uh, that's what this CSV file is for. Now there's another uh, SDR file for rural road. Um, so if you want to have a play around later, you could try bringing in um, uh, this rural road survey. So I'm just going to copy this directory and head over to Civil 3D. I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to go to that directory and pick uh, this drawing template. And the first thing that I'm going to do is save this. Uh, we'll just call it uh, FO train. Save. Now, by default, as we're working uh, with Stringer, creating the strings and, and other data, that, that string of survey data will be packed, stored inside the DWG file by default. Okay, so we can just uh, give that drawing file to someone else and, and um, who might have Stringer and all related data is stored in there. Okay, so there's a number of ways to run Stringer survey commands. There is the ribbon tab and uh, listed here are all the commands you'll need. Um, I'll talk about the tool space in a sec, but it's a the second option of, of running commands, actually my favorite option. Um, but at the start, we have um, settings related to the string creation. We have settings related to points, but these points are stringers built in Kogo points. So you actually have an option. You can use simple 3D Kogo points or you can use stringer Kogo points. In this video series, we're going to be using simple 3D's Kogo point. Uh, settings related to how data gets stored in the DWG, import reduce, which is um, another name for that command is stringer connect, uh, which allows us to bring raw data in. So we've got um, survey creation tools, the survey line manager uh, is a nice interface for editing your strings. <clears throat> then this is actually quite important. It's probably one of the most important commands uh, Stringer for Civil 3D is the Civil 3D point link. Um, so the idea is that point groups 
from symbol 3D get linked to Stringer. You tell Stringer what point groups you're going to be using. Now some of these links will happen by default, uh, but if say I imported a um, points from a, a point file in, in um, Civil 3D to create some points and I wanted to string those up then I would need to link that point group to Stringer and we'll talk about that later. So uh, there's tools to do a, a, a point transformation, helmet transformation on our on a, on a point group. Um, a very useful command in Stringer is multi symbols which allows you to add extra blocks to a Kogo point, commonly used for trees to, to show the trunk and spread and that type of thing, or a 3D representation of the tree. Um, update all is a very useful command if um, you make some edits and you just wanna ensure that everything gets updated, uh, whether it's um, point display, uh, tables that you've outputted, reprocessing strings, that type of thing. Um, now, you shouldn't always have to run that command because uh, uh, if the dynamics are turned on, then things should just dynamically update. I'm not going to talk about the cadastral lines command um, in this video series, but this allows you to create points and, and line work by entering bearing and distance. Uh, I'm also not going to show the conformance reporting tools, but these are really cool. These allow you to compare point groups with other point groups or point groups against uh, alignments and surfaces. Um, so that's what the uh, compare report allows you to do. We'll certainly output a legend table using this command and model viewer is, uh, allows us to visualize our survey in a 3D environment. So. Um, what I'm going to do is click on Toolspace and open up the string of Toolspace. Um, and I'm a big, big fan of, of using the Toolspace. Uh, firstly, because I can, you know, it doesn't matter what tab I'm, I'm on in Civil 3D, I've always, I always have access to my string of commands and I can also view the, the objects that I create. I can see strings that I've created, zoom to them, uh, all that type of thing. And we can also um, run commands from the tool space by right clicking on a heading or an object we can access commands and down the bottom are some of the important commands in stringer so connect importing the raw data uh, i did mention stringer has a built-in kogo point so you can create stringer points if you want using the next button this button creates the survey strings or allows us to view uh, created survey strings the multi-symbol tool I talked about, outputting a legend table, doing a helmet transformation and, and visualization. But uh, this uh, tool space, it's very much just like the Civil 3D one. You could even park it underneath it if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna dock that over to the right hand side. So let's have a quick look at some of the settings, uh, some of the important settings that um, you need to know to get started. And um, the first one I'm going to look at is string defaults because if you've gone through and set up some styles for your company, um, it is important um, or of benefit to specify those tables here. So you might have a, a string set for when you use alpha codes or a string set for when you use numeric codes. And it's just a, a time saving thing. So whenever you get prompted to pick a string set, if you're creating strings, by default the software will um, uh, pick whatever is specified here. So that's some of the defaults. As I said, uh, we're not that interested in the code sets because um, we're using the simple 3D Coco points. The next uh, important command is the survey string settings. Now, if you, if you were using, sorry, the, the, the string of Coco points, then, then these um, styles here would be important but I want to jump straight to survey string settings and just run through this command uh, with you. Now the first thing I, I get is this message box and I get this because the software is scanning my string sets looking at all the layers and and has detected that those layers don't exist in my template so it's just saying hey would you like to, the software to create these automatically and I'm going to say yes. <coughs> Okay, so this is my survey string set. Now the important thing to remember is these tables are stored locally for the project. They're stored inside the DWG file. So any change I make in here, or if I make another table, 
is just local to this project. I'm not affecting any other projects. However, if I'm setting up a table for my company, um, some styles for my, you know, for my company for future projects, then we can do so in here uh, by adding tables, but we just click on set as global and it sets it, um, stores it in the global library so we can reference um, in future projects as well. So I'll have a look at the, the uh, numeric uh, string set here and we can see all the codes are listed and let's just scroll down to uh, something that forms a break line. So we can see we've got 302 and uh, an asterisk after that. So when the software is reviewing the codes, it's going to use this entry if the string has 302 at the start. If it finds this entry, uh, we're going to add a break line to the surface. So we're going to add the break line to um, the, the civil 3D surface. We're going to create 2D line work. The line work is going to be placed on that layer. Uh, this entry has been told to create 3D line work, which will be placed on that layer. You can also apply a template. I wouldn't do that here, but if you say like to pick up the lip of curb and have the, the software automatically string up, you know, the top of curb and the back of the, the curb and add those as break lines to the surface and you can apply a template. I'll show you that um, a little bit later on. Now, although I've told the software to create 3D line work for this entry, globally, uh, 3D line work has been turned off. But any time I can come in here and turn it on and, and click apply, and then the 3D line work will be outputted. So globally, we can set whether we output 2D or 3D line work. And uh, we're only processing strings uh, that have uh, or codes that have string numbers on them. So there is an option to uh, string codes that actually don't have a string number on them, but um, that would be a rare case. So we can add another entry in by going add survey line. You can delete select multiple and delete uh, if you're making a whole bunch of bulk editing in here then override selected is a real time saver so we can select a whole bunch of entries toggle the break line option override the layers that um, will be used all that type of thing if you're coming from an older version of stringer where the sdb file was used and you can actually set up one of these tables by importing the sdb file um, so um, if you are coming from the legacy stringer, then I recommend using that option to help you get started up and running nice and quick. But that's pretty much it. Um, a very important command though when we go and create strings because the software will ask us to pick the uh, survey line set that we want to use. So I'm going to click on apply and close to that. We'll go back to the main settings. The next main setting I wanted to look at is the survey string parameters. So on a string, you can uh, tell the string to start forming an arc, three-point arc, a two-point arc. Um, maybe there's a point that you want to exclude from the surface. Uh, maybe you want to close a string off. So we call these dot parameters, point parameters. So the symbol at the end of a code will be a dot. Um, and then, you know, we can specify whatever character we want to use. So dot F will form an arc at the end of the code. Um, dot x will exclude it from the surface that type of thing now i mentioned you could apply templates so if i use the dot parameter and put one of these codes on then we can say that that particular string will um will form a, a template so if we picked up the lip of curb as i mentioned then the software will attach you know the rest of the the codes the top of curb back of curb and add those as break lines so you can customize the point parameters if you wish and if we go into the template editor this is where you can go in and create your own templates uh, we've got a whole bunch of pre uh, made templates but if I pick up this point then the software will add the invert the top and the back for us okay so that covers sort of the main settings I wanted to look at um, for now. Another useful command is uh, in here is actually adding um, aerial imagery from satellite. If I didn't have the aerial imagery, then I could bring it in from Google Maps or Bing Maps or something like that. Um, but right clicking at the top here, 
will access the core uh, drawing settings. So that's a, a, a bit of an overview of uh, a bit of an introduction into the interface. As I said, you could run commands from the ribbon tab. You can run um, commands from the tool space. I'm a big fan of the tool space because you see the objects you created and you can run commands um, from the tool space and you can leave it open even on another screen if you wanted to. Um, so in the next video, we're going to use connect to import the raw data. This drawing template that I'm using contains a surface entry here called NS. Uh, obviously, it's empty at the moment, but this is the surface that we're going to uh, reference when we uh, string and add uh, break lines later on.